Boom! Yes, folks, hear me again. So we come with another SEA question. All right. Again, sent by one of my teacher friends. I mean, as teachers, no shame in the game, right? We have all and we will all run into questions at some point that ugh, pressure, stress at all levels, whether it's a SEA teacher or a CSEC teacher or a CAPE, it happens to everybody. And it's nice when we could collaborate among ourselves, bounce things off of each other, help each other, etc., etc. That is just the nature of the thing. So that is how we do it and that's what we do it. <coughs> so the question reads as follows. Naya or Nia, whatever, you know how these things are. N-I-A, you pronounce it however you want. I just go with Naya. Naya or Nia? Let me go with Nia because K-I-A is Kia. So if K-I-A is Kia and R-I-A is Rhea, then N-I-A might be Nia too. All right? Good. So Nia had three times as many cookies as Lynn. Mm -hmm. After Nia ate 50 cookies, she had half as many cookies as Lynn. Mm -hmm. So you see how the things started to get complexicated already. This is the kind of language that could intimidate most people. Right? Three times as many cookies as Lynn. After Nia ate 50 cookies, she had half as many cookies as Lynn. How many cookies did Nia have left? It, yeah. So the first step in a question like this is working through the intimidation that you may feel by just reading the question. Right? And, I mean, this is the kind of question that People, again, people doing this question at SE level and this question could cause problems for a lot of students even at Form 4 and Form 5 level. So do not by, under, by any means underestimate these kinds of questions. But we're here so that we work it up. Let me read the question again. Nia had three times as many cookies as Lynn. First sentence. After Nia ate 50 cookies, she had half as many cookies as Lynn. How many cookies did Nia have left? Again, we're in a situation where we had to calculate something, we had to figure out some quantity of something, and again, we have unknown quantity or quantities as in this case. So in this case, we have two unknown quantities. What helps us in this situation, however, is that the two unknown quantities are linked to each other what that means is that we could express both of them in the same way. We could express both of them in the same language. We could express one unknown quantity uh, in terms of the other or in relation to the other. All right, so look at exactly what I'm talking about now. <coughs> now, seeing that the question says that Nia had three times as many cookies as Lynn, what I did, I said, let the number of cookies Lynn had equal x. And if the number of cookies Lynn had is equal to x, then at three times the number of cookies that Lynn had, the number of cookies that Nia had will be 3x. So in other words, we do it in a way that would simplify the working because I could just as well have I could easily have said, let the number of cookies near had equal x. In which case, because near's cookies is three times Lynn's cookies, if I give, if I let near's cookies be x, then Lynn's cookies will be x over three, because you have to maintain that relationship of the multiplication by three. All right. So to make things simpler, I let the number of cookies Lynn had be x, which means then that the number of cookies near had is 3x. So even at the point of assigning the variables, this question could become a little tricky in terms of how we go about solving. So we go. So. If the number of cookies that Nia had, Lynn had, sorry, is there. So my working is as follows. 
right? So a number of cookies len had equal equal x, and if the number of cookies that len had is equal to x, and near had three times as many cookies as len, then the number of cookies uh, near had will be equal to 3x. x, 3x. So even though we have two unknowns in that we don't know how many cookies len had and we don't know how many cookies near had, because they are related by this factor of 3, where near's cookies is 3 times len's cookies, we could express both of them in the same kind of way. So if the number of cookies Lane had is x, then naturally the number of cookies that Nia had would be 3x. Now, the question says, after Nia ate 50 cookies, she had half as many cookies as Lane. How do we express that in mathematical prose? All right. <clears throat> after Nia ate, ate 50 cookies, so if near eight fifty cookies, if near eight fifty cookies, this is what we will write to represent that. Three x, which is the amount of cookies that near started with, and you eat fifty, so you take away fifty. Right? So three x minus fifty is the mathematical expression of the sentence where they said that near eight fifty cookies. So after she ate fifty cookies. The number of cookies that she had left was half as many cookies as Lynn had. Good? So in other words, the when she had she started off with three, she eat fifty. And the amount she had at that point is half of the amount that Lynn had at the beginning. So this is the equation. Again, the hard part in this question is to get to this point. Once you get to this point, the problem is pretty much over. So we solve it. Of course now, the techniques we're going to use here are techniques that even give some form 4 and form 5 students question. Trouble, sorry. So we have 3x minus 50, so I'm just going to write it over, 3x minus 50, and I'm writing it like this now, just for the sake of clarification, is equal to x over 2. Because we have a denominator here, we have a fraction here, x over 2. So we write 3x minus 50 as 3x minus 50 over 1, which will then put us in prime position to cross multiply. And we will then have that... <coughs> 2 into 3x minus 50 is equal to 1 by x, right? And I'm writing it like that just for the sake of explanation. So 2 into 3x minus 50 is our good friend. And I'm still in some space here now. And I'm going to change the color of the marker just for the sake of contrast, right? So coming here now, we have 6x minus 100 is equal to x. So we bring the, all the x's on one side, 6x minus x, we take the minus 100 and we carry it across on this side, 6x minus x is 100, so 5x is equal to 100, and if 5x is equal to 100, x is equal to 100 over 5, which is equal to 20. So in other words, if x is equal to 20, and the number of cookies that Lynn had was x, it means that Lynn started off with 20 cookies. And Nia had 60 cookies. So that now would put us in a position to double check the answer to make sure that we are in fact correct. So at 20 here for Lynn, this would be 60 for Nia. And let me check it out. 3 by 20 minus 50 is uh, let me see, 3 by 20 minus 50 is 60 minus 50, which is equal to 10. x over 2. 20 over 2 is equal to 10. So we got the figure, we applied it here, and then we double check it in the original algebra equation 
and the figures do in fact match up. So at that point, we know that the answer we have is in fact the correct answer. All right? So nice question. Really, really nice question. Um, it is a fair and reasonable debate, I think, as to whether or not 10, 11, and 12 year olds. I mean, there are people who think that 10, 11, and 12 year olds shouldn't be doing this level of algebra. But that's a separate debate. But as long as we end this position when we're doing it, we try to do the thing whenever we could. All right? So that's it. So again, as always, if you have any hard questions, if you have any, have any questions that give you problems or trouble, feel free to send it. You never know. I just might do a little video on it. Okay? So keep good, take care, and look out for more videos.